Project Borough is now available as a podcast on your chosen podcast providers, so you can listen to every episode on the go. Simply go to the description of this video, click the link to the podcast provider of your choice, and subscribe or follow Project Borough, and you'll be able to find all episodes past, present, and future right there for you to listen to on the go. Five wins in seven, five clean sheets in seven, and a striker in form. Borough seem to be hitting their stride at the right time, but the question is, is it just too little, too late? He's in, and he's snuck it across to Hayden What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to Project Borough and today we are discussing another win for the Borough, another clean sheet for the Borough and a game which was lit up by one man and that was Borough's number 9, Emmanuel Latte Laugh. Now it's safe to say and I'm not going to blow my own trumpet too much here but I did predict when I did the video on the running that Borough would draw against Southampton, beat Sheffield Wednesday beat Swansea and on the Borough Breakdown podcast last week I said this because I've cursed us but yeah 2-0 keep the the good run going keep the clean sheets going and hopefully everyone around us falls I'm praying for their downfall just because I think it'd be funny and also it would open up the potential for Canberra again to the playoffs mark two or three or four or whatever we're on Matt? I'm going to snap on that I was going to say 2-0 and I'll, uh, I'll go Latte Laugh to get a brace as well. Why not? So yeah, quick shout out. I have been on the Borough Breakdown podcast quite a bit lately. I am on there from time to time. But even when I'm not, if you're a Borough fan and a football fan and you like listening to content regarding Borough, that is the best podcast you will find covering the club. And I suggest you guys go and subscribe to them over on the YouTube channel and on podcast providers because I'm involved as their graphic designer. And I also am on the podcast from time to time as a co-host. So yeah, I want to give them a quick shout out. And yeah... Also, if you want the lottery numbers, hit me up. But yeah, in all seriousness, talking about this game, and I will be bringing you guys a surprise vlog of this game. I thought it would be fun, given this was to be the final 3 o'clock kickoff I'll be attending this season. I thought it would be a good time to vlog the game and bring you guys my first vlog of the Borough at the Riverside at a home game, so that's going to be coming up. If it's not up already, do keep your eyes out and subscribe to check it out because it will be up very, very soon. But I think it's safe to say this wasn't a thriller of a game, and it was a game that, for the most part, was rather flat, a little bit subdued, gave off the impression of two teams that were kind of on the beach a little bit, there wasn't much energy. There was times where Swansea, I mean, their quality was absolutely invisible. It was just gone. There was no quality to this Swansea side whatsoever. And there were also periods where Borough were quite flat and you wanted to just shake them and give them a real injection of life. But when we did have our moments, we took them exceptionally well. And it's all down to the man we have up front, the striker we signed in, in the summer, the striker who... You know, we weren't sure if we could rely on him being our actual number nine, our prolific talisman up top. And he's had his injuries. It took him time, new league, all them things. But it is safe to say, and he deserves immense credit, Latte Lath is finding his stride in this board team. And he scored two fantastic goals here today, which ultimately were the difference. And we've seen in many, many games this season, especially at home, when Borough have played a side who have turned up and not been great. They've either sat back and been really deep, or they've just been genuinely poor. Borough have sort of sunk to their level and have been unable to find the quality and find the killer blow to get the job done. We did it again Sheffield Wednesday and we've done it again here and although it was far from perfect, do not get me wrong, it was far from a good performance, it was pretty darn average and we were pretty flat for long spells. The moments when they came we took exceptionally well and it's all down to that wonderful, wonderful man, Emmanuel Latte Lath. Now the first half of Borough was probably 
the better of the two halves, I think it's safe to say. The team was pretty unchanged from games of late, which is too surprising. I still would have preferred to see Lucas Engel in there for Luke Thomas. I would have still preferred to see someone else in there for, for Sam Greenwood. I keep banging the drum. I want to see Borough use this time to bed in and develop their own players. I, I can't quite understand why Lucas Engel is not getting a run in the team over Luke Thomas. But... There's also the argument that you don't change a winning team. So, you know, kind of rolled with it. And the first half was definitely the better of the two halves for Borough. Now, it, still, it wasn't a pretty half of football. We were definitely the more dominant side. We were definitely, I think, the better of the two sides. We didn't create an awful lot. Like Lath did have a few chances, and as he has been doing of late, was just an absolute menace for the opposition. You know, he was stretching their defence... Left, right and centre, the guy, he presses for days, he puts in such a shift, he runs in behind, he's also a nuisance physically. He does have a lot of attributes that would make, you know, not not the perfect all-round striker, I'm not going to pretend he is a perfect all-round striker, because if he was, he wouldn't be playing for Borough in the Championship. But he is good at uh, everything, you know, he's a little, he's got little attributes, and yet he might not be as good when it comes to his composure... He might not be as good when he has to maybe think about his finishing over instinct, but he does have strengths pretty much across his entire game, and he gave their defence an absolute runaround in that first half, and he had a number of different chances. He was played in early on, put a shot low to the keeper's right, which was saved, somehow wasn't given a corner after that, which was an absolutely bewildering decision, and he also had another chance where he cut into his left foot, did really well to create the space for himself, and shot straight at the goalkeeper. But he did get Borough's first goal and the breakthrough in the very, very death of the first half. And it was a fantastic finish as well. Isaiah Jones put a cross in from the right-hand side. Got to be said, the goalkeeper will not want to watch this one again. He completely spills the ball. But Swansea still don't deal with it. And I still think Lath's got quite a bit to do here. He picks up the ball. Swansea, in fairness, get back in their numbers. There are so many bodies in front of Lath. Lath. He waits, he waits, he waits, which is something he hasn't always done. The latter half of maybe months ago might have just instantly snapped at it, but he, he waited for his moment and he took a shot with his left foot. And he didn't catch it 100%, but he cut it back through loads of bodies. The goalkeeper obviously would not have seen the ball until late and it snuck its way into the bottom corner and gave Borough the edge going into half-time. And exactly like the Sheffield Wednesday game last week, you know, these games are the sort of games which, if they drag on, there's that nervousness, that potential that the opposition gets that late sucker punch and Borough go behind, and we've seen it against so many sides. That's been our undoing. But again, like last week against Chef Wednesday, we get the goal early, we get it in the first half, we take the lead, we have control, and it's about ensuring that Swansea do not get back into the game and that's where my my only criticism from the game comes from. Borough weren't great for the first half of the second half. You know, I feel like we just took our foot off, allowed the game to drift. Michael Carrick did say that we were happy to allow Swansea possession, which, if that's the case, fair enough. But it did very much seem like we were just content with being 1-0 up. We must have had a 10-15 minute spell where we didn't really have a period of pressure whatsoever. And we'll probably notice that in the stats and momentum when we look at that in a bit, a little bit later. But it just brought a little bit of anxiety when you think, you know, Borough, we haven't killed the game off yet. It's only 1-0. Let's not give Swansea any opportunity back into this game. And we were just allowing them to pass the ball around, have a good spell of possession, get into their rhythm somewhat. Don't get me wrong, it still did not look like Swansea were ever going to really hurt us. I think Jamal Lloyd might have been on the left-hand side. He pounced on a misplaced pass. He ran in and cut back on his right and hit a pretty tame and, and poor finish straight at Senny Dieng. But Swansea never, ever really looked like threatening Borough. And our defence remained very, very solid. But you just want us to have a degree of control. And I know you can control the ball without, you know, control the game without the ball. But I just, there was a spell where I thought we were just taking our foot off. And it could present Swansea with an opportunity. And we were just like a car that just had stalled. And we just needed some life in the team. I was sort of getting a bit desperate for some substitutes. I thought, you know, this game could get away with us pretty quickly if we don't have an injection of life into this team. But thankfully, we didn't need it because Borough struck and got the second and sealed the game 
pretty much at the perfect time on the 79th minute, just before things had any chance to get really, really nervy or tense. Latilath made absolutely sure. And I tell you what, this was the pick of the bunch. Ball was played forward. Fair play to Isaiah Jones. He won the header really, really well. Didn't have the best game, but won the header. It ball was took down by Finizaz. He waited until the perfect moment. Laff made a fantastic run across to the left-hand side. Ball was played into him. Lati Laff, of course, right-footed. Seems to get a lot of, lot of chances on his left foot, which he isn't as comfortable with. But he chops back onto his right, sits the defender down, and then bends it beautifully into the far corner. It just gave you all, all the little bits and pieces that... We've wanted to see from Lati Laff. You know, we've seen him instinctively with good heading. We've seen him latch on to, to, to loose balls and put the ball in the bottom corner. But if there's one thing you'd want to see from him, it's that moment where he just stops, sets himself, picks his spot and buries it. And my only, if you even want to call it a criticism, maybe you want to call it just area for improvement, is when he has that time and he has to think about what he needs to do, where he needs to put the ball. But in fairness here, he made a fantastic run. He cut back, he sat the defender down, and he waited. He picked his spot and he put it right in the corner. And it just gave you that feeling of a striker who is confident. A striker who believes in his ability and thinks, doesn't matter where I get the chances, I'm going to make sure... I put it away, and it's fantastic. And I know I normally go through all the team and the Borough eleven uh, in a certain segment of the video, but I've got to just say, I've really liked Latilla throughout this season, and I think we've slowly been seeing him improve. And out of all the Borough players who are going to be here next season, and I said this in a recent video I did a couple of weeks back, looking at the squad for next season, I had Lath as one of the players who I thought would be absolutely vital going into next season. You know, question marks can still be asked whether he can be relied on solely to carry Borough's goal-scoring threat going forward, but when you've got force as well, keep him fit, you suddenly feel a little bit more excited about this Borough team. But for me, Lath could be a massive, massive player next season, and he is really, really coming into his stride. And Borough's record with strikers over the years is kind of infamously really, really bad. You know, we've had so many strikers who've come to the club, have been fantastic before that they've come here and have been fantastic after they've left. But their spell at Borough has just been that little bit underwhelming. Some even disastrous. But if you take out Archer, who was alone, and Akpom, who was one of the greatest redemption arcs we've ever seen, and just how spoilt we were last season with the goals we had... That, that squad last season could possibly skew your perception of just how good Lati Lath has been and just what a job he's done. 12 goals he's got now. Given the injuries he's had, he has been out for prolonged spells. Given the fact he's new to the league, given the fact he's new language, I think you compare what he's done to other Borough strikers who we've paid far more money for in the past and have been much, much bigger flops. I think Lati Lath's done exceptionally well. And I think maybe... People might compare him to the Archers and the Akpoms and Marcus Force from last year and whatever. And that might be why he doesn't quite get the credit I think he deserves. But in isolation, you look at what he's done, I think he's coming on leaps and bounds. And he, he was the shining light today. Don't get me wrong, there were still some other very, very good performances in there. But it was far from our best. But he was the difference. And I think he deserves immense credit. And he is one of the players that excites me the most heading in to next season. So looking at the Borough team, because there's nothing else really to report highlight-wise, this is how they got on. So in defence, Sunny Dieng and the back four continue to do a pretty good job. You know, you can't really argue by how the Borough defence is performing at the moment. You know, five clean sheets in seven. You think back to the middle of this season, you couldn't buy a clean sheet. Borough couldn't buy one. It was like a rarity when Borough would get a clean sheet. And now we've got five in seven, which is just so... It's just kudos to Michael Carrick. You know, I remember after the Stoke defeat when this run started, and other times this season, you can sometimes lean on Borough's goal-scoring ability or the goal-scoring ability we had last season. But there was always a question mark, even with the team last year. Can Michael Carrick really set up a team to defend? Or is it all about just goals, goals, goals? And he's proven that he's been able to get back to basics, whether it was in the 3-5-2, whether it was in the 4-2-3-1 that we're playing at the moment. Michael Carrick's proven that he can get this Borough side playing solid defensive football at the back. And that, that's got to be your platform. You know, I said 
when we lost 2-0 to Stoke and we looked like we were in absolute trouble, we just need to get back to basics, sort out the back, that's the foundation to build on, and hopefully find our goal scoring feet from there. And that's exactly what we've done, we've gone back to basics, we've got a solid foundation, 5 clean sheets and 7 as I say, Seni Dieng didn't really have much to do today in all fairness, he had to make one save I'd say from Jamal Lowe, the back four were brilliant, you know I continue to say Johnny House and Matt Clark, you know probably you know the most unlikely of, of centre back pairings, you think back to the start of the season when you have Lenahan, Fry, Vandenberg, all these other players, you wouldn't have probably thought with Clark's injury and House and being a midfielder, that these two would be as good as they are at the back, but Johnny Housen continues to just be fantastic wherever he plays. Matt Clark, man, has been unbelievable. I can't praise him enough. You know, he come to Borough, quite a big reputation. He'd been player of the season, I think, at his two previous clubs at some point. He's known for being quite good with the, you know, in terms of ball playing, but he's also a very good defender. And I think, given the fact he was out for over a year, a year with an injury. It may have took him a bit longer to, to come back and readjust, but he was dropped into the team when McNair got injured back at, at Leeds earlier in the season. But he's, he's gradually found his way back, and not only is he good on the ball, he also heads absolutely everything. He is such a great defender, he's the perfect mix of technically good, but also very no-nonsense. And I think he's absolutely brilliant. And then arguably, I think has made that position his own. And I think it's a question of who comes back in alongside him next season. Is it Rav? Is it Fry? Is it Lenahan? Not a bad trio of defenders to pick from to go alongside Matt Clark. So that's really, really promising. I'm also going to give praise to Luke Ayling. I thought he had one of his best games and is coming back into form. You know, very, very solid defensively on the right. Also always uh, poses some form of a threat going forward, overlapping and has a very, very good cross on him as well. And Luke Thomas, I will give credit to. First half, I was once again sat there thinking, what on God's green earth has Carrick thought or seen to put him in front of Lucas Engel? You know, he had a terrible first half and looked like he was, you know, getting caught in behind numerous times, losing the ball, didn't look comfortable. Second half, he was steady and he kept Swansea's threats down the right hand side to pretty much zero. So credit to him for going into the game and for that. Midfield two did okay. You know, it wasn't their best game, but O'Brien was all over the pitch. Barlasser was okay in parts. You know, he'll play a good ball one minute, he'll then give the ball away another. He almost scored an own goal, which you'll probably see in my vlog. So Barlasser still has their moments where your heart's in your mouth, and then he still has their moments of quality. So. Inconsistent is what I will say, but they both did a solid enough job today. In the attack, again, a bit like Sheffield Wednesday, I thought Isaiah Jones was not one of the odd ones out, but again, he just wasn't quite in the game. You know, he was on his heels at times, didn't quite seem like he was interested. There were times where I'd want him to be busting a gut down the right, taking his man on. Didn't seem up for it, but again, played a crucial part in the second goal, winning the header that set that attack going. So, still plays a part, Jones, although he wasn't at his best. Azaz, same really, he grew into the game in fairness, he did assist the second goal and yeah, I think has had better games, has had worse games but was okay and the same can be said for Sam Greenwood, you know, there were times where his crossing and his, his set pieces were absolutely wayward and the quality was really, really poor from him but he put in a shift once again and has again continued to be a little bit more effective than what he has been in past spells and, and, and did well enough again today. But as I say, Lati Lath is the man. He is the man. A brace. Fantastic. Great to see. And I'm happy for him because I think he's just such a great character. Such a chaotic, funny player to watch at times. But it's great to see a player join the club and grow and develop and get better. And he's one that I'm very excited in terms of looking forward, nothing really to say on the substitute. Dyke still come on, played at right wing again, which was interesting. Sammy Silvera coming off the left. Sonny Finch got a, a cami off the bench, which was good to see as well. Don't know why he's down as number 10 on foot mob, but it was good to see one of the young lads get a run out and Alex Gilbert come on as well. This is what I mean about the momentum and stats. As you can see, first half, neither side had a particular foothold in the game, but... We took our chance when it mattered. This was the spell I was referring to. You know, after starting the second half relatively well, Borough let Swansea not control the game, but sort of do what they want. And I guess a better team might have put us under more pressure at this point, but they didn't really make the most of it. And Borough come back in and, and made the game sure in the second half, which was good. And this is an interesting start, actually. Borough 
aren't that outpossessed very often at home. But Swansea, 61% possession over Borough's 39, which is a very, very surprising start. I didn't expect that. But they only mustered 0.47 XG. And I think that says a lot about Swansea and how poor they were going forward in this one. Borough, 1.16 XG, 12 shots on target, four sh uh, 12 shots four on target. One big chance, Lattelaf put it away. Absolutely fantastic from him once again. And a look at the championship table. Now, this could have been a lot brighter for Borough because you looked at the fixtures. Coventry had Leeds, one of the top three who've set a ridiculous standard, and Norwich had Ipswich. Same for them. And we were licking our lips, I'm not going to lie, at the thought of Coventry and Norwich, the two teams between us in the playoffs, dropping points. They didn't, in fairness to them. So it's as you were in terms of Borough looking up. But Preston drop points, among others, and Borough just keep this fine form going, you know, and, and the gap's still six points again. I'm not getting drawn into the playoff conversation at all, but it's safe to say if Borough hadn't won today, it would have been curtains. You know, it was a big win for us to keep us within six points, but I still don't think we'll do enough to overthrow Norwich and Coventry. Maybe Coventry, who knows, they have got a game in hand though they've got a couple of tough games coming up but yeah I, I, it, it's 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 irritating in a sense because you look back at certain spells throughout the season certain games like the fact we've gave four points to Rotherham who are relegated already just certain things and you look at our start to the season how we were bottom after seven games and you think had we just picked up one or two more wins you know we'd be in sixth we'd be we'd be in the mix we'd be right there and I guess that's frustrating but you could say that about every club and it swings and it's roundabouts and I get that and it's all hypothetical but it is just a little bit not annoying but to think that Borough might hit fantastic form but just not quite make it. And I still think we've just got too much to do. If we were three points off, I'd be looking at it and thinking, we look like the team. That one team every year who storms in at the last minute with momentum and flies into the playoffs on a rocket ship. And when you've got momentum at the playoffs, you've got a chance, you know. Unlike last year where we had zero momentum going into the playoffs and we completely fluffed it. If you can be the team who fires yourself into sixth, who knows? You know, you've got the momentum. That's huge in the playoffs. And I think we... We're not far off it, but I just think the gap to Norwich is too much. And I do look ahead to this group of fixtures. And as I mentioned too earlier, and I referred to it, the video I did a couple of weeks ago looking at Borough's eight remaining games as it was at that point. And I looked at the games we've had since, and I predicted us to do exactly what we've done. Draw to Southampton, beat Chef Wed, beat Swansea. So none of this is a surprise to me. This is what I sort of expected us to do. I highlighted these three games and this is it for me. Pull away on Wednesday, Ipswich away next weekend, Leeds away on the 22nd on Monday night. These are the three games. Now we simply have to come out of these three games within touching distance and even then we've only got two games left and that's only six points to play for and if we're in the same position we are now that's not going to be a gap we can breach because Norwich's goal difference is, is far superior to our goal difference so we need to somehow gain ground on the top six while playing Hull, Ipswich and Leeds, which is very, very difficult. Now, the game on Wednesday could be make or break. You know, we might knock Hull out of the playoff race completely. Alternatively, they might knock us out completely. A draw, I don't think, does either side either good. So it is literally almost like a mini playoff final, you know, in terms of keeping in at the playoff race, if you want to call it that. But then going to Ipswich, who are fantastic at home and hosting Leeds... It's, it's tough, and this is where I will make a judgment on Borough's season, and whether I think we will have a say, whether we come out of these three games still in touch, if we are, then there's every chance, and I will start entertaining the playoffs, but for me, this is the, the, the period to which I think it will just be our undoing, and I think we will just fall away ever so slightly, maybe the gap's nine points, maybe it's eight points, with two games to go, and I think I think it will be done then. But, I mean, if we can somehow pick up six points from nine in these three, or seven points from nine, we might deserve playoffs. There's an argument to say, if you can beat two of Hull, Ipswich, and Leeds, you, you deserve playoffs, right? I mean, Coventry have beaten Leeds today, Norwich have beaten Ipswich, so the two teams between us and the playoffs have set the bar. You know, they've said, right, we're going to beat Ipswich, we're going to beat Leeds, we want the playoffs. Borough now have to match that, they have to beat Ipswich, and they have to beat Leeds as well. It's a very tough ask, and that's all I'm going to say. I think we'll still fall short, 
Everything I've predicted so far has pretty much come true. I said we'd draw to Hull, I said we'd lose to Ipswich, and I said we'd lose to Leeds. And as much as I hope that's not the case, if that happens, by the time we play Cardiff, it will be game over. But... Let's wait and see. You know, this run cannot be underestimated. The run we've had since that Stoke defeat, and I mean, that was such a terrible spell for us, has been a remarkable turnaround. And the club and Carrick deserve so much credit. But I tell you what, if we can beat Hull and then go to Ipswich and do something there, suddenly the game against Leeds is absolutely huge. And it would be typical Borra to do it against the big teams. And maybe these are fixtures that suit us. You know, away from home against teams who are going to come at us. Hull and Ipswich will come at us. Opens the game up. We know what Borra are like against teams who open the game up away from home. Who knows? But that is it for me. Three games. Judgment Day, Groundhog Day, whatever you want to call it. This season. And what defines it? It's now. So fingers crossed we can keep this run going. But that's all I'm going to say today, guys. I'm going to leave it there. I don't think I'll have a chance to preview... The whole game. I didn't unfortunately have a chance to preview the Swansea game either. But I predicted we'd draw away at Hull. I said 1-1. I'll stand by that because all my predictions have been right so far. And I'll stand by them. But I'll be back midweek. So hopefully here to review another positive result for Borough away at Hull. But let's not pretend this will be a very, very tough game. Two teams just outside the playoffs. Level on points. One could very well knock the other out of the race. It could be do or die. For both of us on Wednesday night. Let's hope it's do for Borough and die for Hull City. But that's it for today guys. If you've enjoyed this video do it the like button and subscribe for much more. Do it the bell too so you never miss a video. And comment below your thoughts whether you're a Borough fan. If you're a Swansea fan or a neutral in the comment section below. If you've listened on the podcast providers as always give me a like and a rating and a follow over there. And as I said earlier do subscribe over on the Borough Breakdown podcast if you want to hear more from me and some other fantastic Borough fans. I am on there again this weekend so I'll be chatting about Swansea and the Borough in a lot more detail on the podcast tomorrow on Sunday depending on when you're watching this. But until next time guys do take care. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.